William Guy Carr, Pawns in the Game, 1958, Pawns in the Game about the author at the early age of 12 The author was thoroughly indoctrinated into the Bolshevik ideology by two revolutionary missionaries who traveled on the same ship with him out to the Orient in 1907. Unlike many others he didn't swallow the bait they offered him hook, line, and sinker. He decided to keep an open mind, and to investigate matters thoroughly, before reaching any conclusions. His investigations and studies of all angles of the international conspiracy have taken him to nearly every country in the world. Commander Carr has had a distinguished naval career. During World War I he served as navigating officer of HM submarines. In World War II he was naval control officer for the St. Lawrence, then staff officer operations at Shelbourne, N. S., then senior naval officer at Goose Bay, Labrador. As an officer on the staff of Commodore Reginald Brock he organized the 7th Victory Loan for the 22 Royal Canadian Naval Training Divisions. As an author he has previously published the seven books listed above. Some were specially bound for inclusion in the Royal Library, the Library of the Imperial War Museum, and the Sir Millington Drake Library, which is bequeathed to Eden College, and the Braille Library for the Blind. Several of his books have been published in European languages. Books previously published by same author. By Guess and by God. Hell's Angels of the Deep. High and Dry. Good Hunting. Out of the Mists. Checkmate in the North. Brass Hats and Bell-Bottomed Trousers. Commander Carr is known to many Canadians who have attended his public lectures. He toured Canada for the Canadian clubs in 1930-31. He warned people of the existence of an international conspiracy. He foretold that the conspirators would, unless checked, drag the world into another global war. In the years between 1931 and 1939 he addressed social and service clubs all over Ontario. In 1944 and 1945 he was sent on another lecture tour of Canada by the naval authorities. He explained why it would be necessary to win the peace, if the fruits of military victory were not to be thrown away again. Commander Carr is determined to inform as many people as possible regarding the evil forces which adversely affect all our lives, and the lives of our children. His book will be an eye-opener to parents, clergymen, teachers, students, statesmen, politicians, and labor leaders. Pawns in the Game here is a true story of international intrigue, romances, corruption, graft, and political assassinations, the like of which has never been written before. It is the story of how different groups or atheistic materialistic men have played in an international chess tournament to decide which group would win ultimate control of the wealth, natural resources, and manpower of the entire world. It is explained how the game has reached the final stage. The international communists, and the international capitalists, both of whom have totalitarian ambitions, have temporarily joined hands to defeat Christian democracy. The cover design shows that all moves made by the international conspirators are directed by Satan and while the situation is decidedly serious it is definitely not hopeless. The solution is to end the game the international conspirators have been playing right now before one or another totalitarian-minded group impose their ideas on the rest of mankind. The story is sensational and shocking, but it is educational because it is the truth. The author offers practical solutions to problems so many people consider insoluble. The publisher special announcement The Red Fog Over America was published December 1955. This book, by the same author, is the story of the communist conspiracy in North America from 1920 to date. The Ottawa spy trials only exposed one spy ring. The Red Fog exposes four others and explain how subversive cells have infiltrated into every level of government and into every class of society. It exposes their activities in politics, labor, industry, education, religion, the armed forces, the civil service, and veteran affairs. The Red Fog exposes the hookup between the legal and illegal sections of the Communist Party. The affiliations between the Communist underground and the criminal underworld. The way all kinds of rackets and illegal traffic and trade are used to undermine the national economy is exposed. The author explains how the subversives encourage and then exploit juvenile delinquency. Order your copy now. Price, $2.
Order through your local bookstore but, if they cannot, or will not, accommodate you then order direct from, Publications Committee, Federation of Christian Laymen, C slash a Willowdale Post Office, Ontario, Canada. The International Conspiracy Introduction Pawns in the Game, 3rd K dit, m, ik asterisk ert tjm8, b william 0 m print stt dot oflo mikalok books 71 v the same author e wike thoisab and by go j hif and dry brass hats and eel bottom trigiel kcrs. Iliala and cells of this dnep j, go hauntemt god of the 3 llst 3. Check him saint in tto n earth. If what I reveal surprises and shocks the reader, Please don't develop an inferiority complex because I am frank to admit that although I have worked since 1911, trying to find out why the human race can t live in peace and enjoy the bounties and blessing God provides for our use and benefit in such abundance. It was 1950 before I penetrated the secret that the wars and revolutions which scourge our lives, and the chaotic conditions that prevail, are nothing more or less than the effects of the continuing Luciferian conspiracy. It started in that part of the universe we call heaven when Lucifer challenged the right of God to exercise supreme authority. The holy scriptures tell us how the Luciferian conspiracy was transferred to this world in the Garden of Eden. Until I realized that our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with the spiritual forces of darkness who control all those in high places on this earth, f. 612, the pieces of evidence gathered all over this world just didn't fit together and make sense. I am not ashamed to admit that the Bible provided the key which enabled me to obtain an answer to the question quoted above. Very few people seem able to appreciate that Lucifer is the brightest and most intelligent of the heavenly host and, because he is a pure spirit, he is indestructible. The scriptures tell us his power is such that he caused one-third of the most intelligent of the heavenly host to defect from God, and join him because he claimed God's plan for the rule of the universe is weak and impractical because it is based on the premise that lesser beings can be taught to know, love, and wish to serve him voluntarily out of respect for his own infinite perfections. The Luciferian ideology states might is right. It claims beings of proven superior intelligence have the right to rule those less gifted because the masses don't know what is best for them. The Luciferian ideology is what we call totalitarianism today. Sponsored by Federation of Christian Laymen Willon.dii.eg. Ontario Print HMFIR Omdu. The Old Testament is simply the history of how Satan became prince of the world, and caused our first parents to defect from God. It relates how the synagogue of Satan was established on this earth, it tells how it has worked since to prevent God's plan for the rule of the universe. Being established on this earth. Christ came to earth when the conspiracy reached the stage that, to use his own words, Satan controlled all those in high places. He exposed the synagogue of Satan, Revelation 2 9, 3 9. He denounced those who belonged to it as sons of the devil, Lucifer, whom he castigated as the father of lies, John 8 44, and the prince of deceit, 2 Cor. 1 1, 14. He was specific in his statement that those who comprised the synagogue of Satan were those who called themselves Jews, but were not, and did lie, Rev. 2 colon 9, 3 colon 9. He identified the money changers, bankers, the scribes, and the Pharisees as the Illuminati of his day. What so many people seem to forget, is the fact that Christ came on earth to release us from the bonds of Satan with which we were being bound tighter and tighter as the years rolled by. Christ gave us the solution to our problem when he told us we must go forth and teach the truth, regarding this conspiracy, John 8 51 to all people of all nations. He promised that if we did this, knowledge of the truth would set us free, Matt 28, 19. The Luciferian conspiracy has developed until it is in its semi-final stage, Matt 24, 15 34 simply because we have failed to put the mandate Christ gave us into effect. In 1784 an act of God placed the Bavarian government in possession of evidence which proved the existence of the continuing Luciferian conspiracy. Adam Weishaupt, a Jesuit-trained professor of canon law, defected from Christianity, and embraced the Luciferian ideology while teaching in Ingolstadt University. In 1770 the money lenders, 
who had recently organized the House of Rothschild, retained him to revise and modernize the age-old protocols designed to give the synagogue of Satan ultimate world domination so they can impose the Luciferian ideology upon what remains of the human race, after the final social cataclysm, by use of satanic despotism. Weishaupt completed his task May 1, 1776. The plan required the destruction of all existing governments and religions. This objective was to be reached by dividing the masses, whom he termed goyim, meaning human cattle, into opposing camps in ever-increasing numbers on political, racial, social, economic, and other issues. The opposing sides were then to be armed and an incident provided which would cause them to fight and weaken themselves as they destroyed national governments and religious institutions. In 1776 Weishaupt organized the Illuminati to put the plot into execution. The word Illuminati is derived from Lucifer, and means holders of the light. Using the lie that his objective was to bring about a one-world government to enable men with proven mental ability to govern the world he recruited about 2,000 followers. These included the most intelligent men in the field of arts and letters, education, the sciences, finance, and industry. He then established lodges of the Grand Orient to be their secret headquarters. Weishaupt's revised plan required his Illuminati to do the following things to help them accomplish their purpose. 1. Use monetary and sex bribery to obtain control of people already occupying positions in high places in the various levels of all governments and other fields of human endeavor. Once an influential person had fallen for the lies, deceits, and temptations of the Illuminati they were to be held in bondage by application of political and other forms of blackmail and threats of financial ruin, public exposure, and physical harm and even death to themselves and their loved ones. 2. Illuminati on the faculties of colleges and universities were to recommend students possessing exceptional mental ability belonging to well-bred families with international leanings for special training in internationalism. This training was to be provided by granting scholarships to those selected. They were to be educated, indoctrinated, into accepting the idea that only a one-world government can put an end to recurring wars and tribulations. They were to be at first persuaded and then convinced that men of special ability and brains had the right to rule those less gifted, because the goyim, masses of the people, don't know what is best for them physically, mentally, and spiritually. Today three such special schools are located in Gordonstown in Scotland, Salem in Germany, and Anavrita in Greece. Prince Philip, the husband of Queen Elizabeth of England, was educated at Gordonstown at the instigation of Lord Louis Mountbatten, his uncle, who became Britain's Admiral of the Fleet after World War II ended. 3. Influential people trapped into coming under the control of the Illuminati, and students who had been specially educated and trained were to be used as agenter and placed behind the scenes of all governments as experts and specialists so they could advise the top executives to adopt policies which would in the long run, serve the secret plans of the one-worlders and bring about the ultimate destruction of the governments and religions they were elected or appointed to serve. 4. The Illuminati were to obtain control of the press and all other agencies which distribute information to the public. News and information was to be slanted so that the goyim would come to believe that a one-world government is the only solution to our many and varied problems. Because Britain and France were the two greatest powers at the end of the 18th century, Weishaupt ordered the Illuminati to foment the colonial wars to weaken the British Empire and organize the Great Revolution to weaken the French Empire. The latter he scheduled should start in 1789. A German author named Zwack put Weishaupt's revised version of the age-old conspiracy into book form and named it Einige Original Skripten. In 1784 a copy of this document was sent to the Illuminists Weishaupt had delegated to foment the French Revolution. The courier was struck dead by lightning as he rode through Radisbon on his way from Frankfurt to Paris. The police found the subversive documents on his body and turned them over to the proper government authorities. After careful study of the plot the Bavarian government ordered the police to raid Weishaupt's newly organized lodges of the Grand Orient and the homes of some of his most influential associates, in eluding the castle of Baron Bassus in Sandersdorf. Additional evidence thus obtained convinced the authorities the documents were a genuine copy of a conspiracy by which the synagogue of Satan, who controlled the Illuminati at the top, 
plan to use wars and revolutions to bring about the establishment of one kind or another of a one world government, the powers of which they intended to usurp as soon as it was established. In 1785, the Bavarian government outlawed the Illuminati and closed the lodges of the Grand Orient. In 1786, they published the details of the conspiracy. The English title is The Original Riddings of the Order and Sect of the Illuminati. Copies of the conspiracy were sent to the heads of church and state. The power of the Illuminati was so great that this warning was ignored, as were the warnings Christ had given the world. The Illuminati went underground. Weishaupt instructed his Illuminists to infiltrate into the lodges of Blue Masonry and form a secret society within secret societies. Only Masons who proved themselves internationalists, and those whose conduct proved they had defected from God, are initiated into the Illuminati. Thus the conspirators used the cloak of philanthropy to hide their revolutionary and subversive activities. In order to infiltrate into Masonic lodges in Britain Illuminists invited John Robeson over to Europe. He was a high-degree Mason in the Scottish Rite, Professor of Natural Philosophy at Edinburgh University, and Secretary of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. John Robeson did not fall for the lie that the objective of the One World Earth was to form a benevolent dictatorship. He kept his reactions to himself however, and was entrusted with a copy of Weishaupt's revised conspiracy for study and safekeeping. Because the heads of church and state in France were advised to ignore the warnings given them the revolution broke out in 1789. In order to alert other governments to their danger, in 1798 John Robeson published a book, entitled Proof of a Conspiracy to Destroy All Governments and Religions. J.T. But his warnings have been ignored, as were the others. Thomas Jefferson had become a student of Weishaupt's. He was one of his strongest defenders when he was outlawed by his government. Jefferson infiltrated the Illuminati into the newly organized lodges of the Scottish Rite in New England. Realizing this information will shock many Americans I wish to record the following facts. In 1789, John Robeson warned Masonic leaders the Illuminati had infiltrated into their lodges. On July 19, 1798, David Papin, president of Harvard University, issued the same warning to the graduating class and lectured them on the influence Illuminism was having on American politics and religion. John Quincy Adams had organized the New England Masonic Lodges. In 1800 he decided to oppose Jefferson for the presidency. He wrote three letters to Colonel W.M. L. Stone exposing how Jefferson was using Masonic Lodges for subversive purposes. The information contained in these letters is credited with winning Adams the election. The letters are in Rittenberg Square Library, in Philadelphia. Asterisk slash slash from any high school history book Mr. Carr could have learned who ran and who was selected in the election of 1800, when was Thomas Jefferson president, and when was J.Q. Adams president. So much for so much, what basis is there to say that Jefferson was a student of Weishaupt's ideas? Jefferson was not statist, was not letter to Bishop James Madison. 31, 1800, which Mr. Carr probably hasn't even read? Insignia of the Order of Illuminati that Illuminist Jefferson made the reverse of U.S. seal, again? What had Jefferson to do with the Greel seal of the U.S.? The above insignia of the Order of Illuminati was adopted by Weishaupt at the time he founded the order, on May 1, 1776. It is that event that is memorialized by the Mtkalskse at the base of the pyramid, and not the date of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, as the uninformed have supposed. The significance of the design is as follows, the pyramid represents the conspiracy for destruction of the Catholic, universal Christian, church, and establishment of a one world, or UN dictatorship, the secret of the order, the eye radiating in all directions, is the all-spying eye that symbolizes the terroristic, Gestapo-like, espionage agency that Weishaupt set up under the name of Insinuating Brethren, to guard the secret of the order and to terrorize the populace into acceptance of its rule. This Ogpu had its first workout in the reign of terror of the French Revolution, which it was instrumental in organizing. It is a source of amazement that the electorate tolerates the continuance of use of this insignia as part of the Great Seal of the U.S. Anutcoiptus means our enterprise, conspiracy, 
has been crowned with success. Below, Novice Ordo Siclarum explains the nature of the enterprise, and it means a new social order, or new deal. It should be noted that this insignia acquired Masonic significance only after merger of that order with Order of Illuminati at the Congress of Wilhelmsbad, in 1782. Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, Roosevelt Kinsman, and Thomas Jefferson, ardent Illuminist, proposed the above as the reverse of the seal, on the face of which was the eagle symbol, to Congress, which adopted it on June 20, 1782. On adoption of the Constitution, Congress decreed, by Act of September 15, 1789, its retention as seal of the United States. It is stated however, by the State Department in its latest publication on the subject, 2860, that the reverse has never been cut and used as a seal, and that only the observe bearing the eagle symbol has been used as official seal and coat of arms. It first was published on the left of the reverse of the dollar bills at the beginning of the New Deal, 1933 by order of President F.D. Roosevelt. What is the meaning of the publication at the outset of the New Deal of this Gestapo symbol that had been so carefully suppressed up to that date that few Americana knew of its existence, other than as a Masonic symbol? It can only mean that with the advent of the New Deal the Illuminist Socialist Communist conspirators, followers of Professor Weishaupt, regarded their efforts as beginning to be crowned with success. In effect this seal proclaims to the one worlders that the entire power of the U.S. government is now controlled by the Illuminati's agenter and is persuaded or forced to adopt policies which further the secret plans of the conspirators to undermine and destroy it together with the remaining governments of the so-called free world, all existing religions, etc., etc., so that the synagogue of Satan will be able to usurp the powers of the first world government to be established and then impose a Luciferian totalitarian dictatorship upon what remains of the human race. In 1826 Captain W. M. Morgan decided it was his duty to inform other Masons and the general public what the truth is regarding the Illuminati, their secret plans and intended purpose. The Illuminati obtained the services of Richard Howard, an English Illuminist, to carry out their sentence that Morgan be executed as a traitor. Captain Morgan was warned of his danger. He tried to escape to Canada but Howard caught up with him near the border. He was murdered near the Niagara Gorge. Research proved that one Avery Allen made a sworn affidavit in the city of New York to the effect that he heard Richard Howard report to a meeting of Knights. Templars in St. John's Hall, New York, how he had executed Morgan. He told how arrangements had then been made to ship Howard back to England. Very few people today know that general disapproval and disgust over this incident caused nearly 40% of Masons belonging to the northern jurisdiction of the United States to secede. I have copies of minutes of a meeting held to discuss this particular matter. The power of those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy against God and man can be realized by the ability of their agenter to prevent such outstanding events of history being taught in our public schools. In 1829, the Illuminati held a meeting in New York which was addressed by a British Illuminist named Wright. Those in attendance were informed that the Illuminati intended to unite the nihilist and atheist groups with all other subversive organizations into an international organization to be known as communism. This destructive force was to be used to enable the Illuminati to foment future wars and revolutions. Clinton Roosevelt, a direct ancestor of FDR. Horace Greeley, and Chaz. Dana were appointed a committee to raise funds for this new venture. The fund they raised financed Karl Marx and Engels when they wrote Das Kapital and the Communist Manifesto in Soho, England. In 1830, Weishaupt died. He carried the deception that the Illuminati was dead to his own deathbed where, to convince his spiritual advisors, he pretended to repent and rejoin the church. According to Weishaupt's revised version of the age-old conspiracy the Illuminati were to organize, finance, direct and control all international organizations and groups by working their agenter into executive positions at the top. Thus it was that while Karl Marx was writing the Communist Manifesto under direction of one group of Illuminists, Professor Karl Ritter of Frankfurt University was writing the antithesis under direction of another group, so that those who direct the conspiracy at the top could use the differences in these two ideologies to start. 
dividing larger and larger numbers of the human race into opposing camps so they could be armed and then made to fight and destroy each other, together with their political and religious institutions. The work Ritter started was continued by the German so-called philosopher Friedrich Wilhelm Nietzsche, 1844-1900, who founded Nietzscheism. Nietzscheism was developed into fascism and later into Nazism and used to enable the agenter of the Illuminati to foment World Wars I and II. In 1834 the Italian revolutionary leader Guspi Mazzini was selected by the Illuminati to be director of their revolutionary program throughout the world. He held this post until he died in 1872. In 1840, General Albert Pike was brought under the influence of Mazzina because he became a disgruntled officer when President Jefferson Davis disbanded his auxiliary Indian troops on the grounds they had committed atrocities under the cloak of legitimate warfare. Pike accepted the idea of a one-world government and ultimately became head of the Luciferian priesthood. Between 1859 and 1871, he worked out the details of a military blueprint, for three world wars, and three major revolutions which he considered would further the conspiracy to its final stage during the 20th century. Most of his work was done in the 13-room mansion, he built in Little Rock, Arkansas, in 1840. When the Illuminati, and the lodges of the Grand Orient, became suspect, because of Mazzini's revolutionary activities in Europe, Pike organized the new and reformed Palladian Rite. He established three supreme councils, one in Charleston, SC, another in Rome, Italy, and another in Berlin, Germany. He had Mazzini establish 23 subordinate councils in strategic locations throughout the world. These have been the secret headquarters of the world revolutionary movement ever since. Long before Marconi invented wireless, radio, the scientists who were of the Illuminati had made it possible for Pike and the heads of his councils to communicate secretly. It was the discovery of this secret that enabled intelligence officers to understand how apparently unrelated incidents took place simultaneously throughout the world which aggravated a situation and developed into a war or revolution. Pike's plan was as simple as it has proved effective. He required that communism, Nazism, political Zionism, and other international movements be organized and used to foment the three global wars and three major revolutions. The First World War was to be fought so as to enable the Illuminati to overthrow the powers of the Tsars in Russia and turn that country into the stronghold of atheistic communism. The differences stirred up by agenter of the Illuminati between the British and German empires were to be used to foment this war. After the war ended, Communism was to be built up and used to destroy other governments and weaken religions. World War II, was to be fomented by using the differences between fascists and political Zionists. This war was to be fought so that Nazism would be destroyed and the power of political Zionism increased so that the sovereign state of Israel could be established in Palestine. During World War II international communism was to be built up until it equaled in strength that of united Christendom. At this point it was to be contained and kept in check until required for the final social cataclysm. Can any informed person deny Roosevelt and Churchill did not put this policy into effect? World War III is to be fomented by using the differences the agenter of the Illuminati stir up between political Zionists and the leaders of the Muslim world. The war is to be directed in such a manner that Islam, the Arab world including Mohammedanism, and political Zionism, including the state of Israel, will destroy themselves while at the same time the remaining nations, once more divided against each other on this issue, will be forced to fight themselves into a state of complete exhaustion physically, mentally, spiritually, and economically. Can any unbiased and reasoning person deny that the intrigue now going on in the Near, Middle, and Far East isn't designed to accomplish this devilish purpose? On August 15, 1871, Pike told Mazzina that after World War III is ended, those who aspire to undisputed world domination will provoke the greatest social cataclysm the world has ever known. We quote his own written words, taken from the letter catalogued in the British Museum Library, London, ENG, we shall unleash the nihilists and atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery and of the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere, 
the citizens, obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries, will exterminate those destroyers of civilization, and the multitude, disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will be from that moment without compass, direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer brought finally out in the public view, a manifestation which will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. When Mazzina died in 1872, Pike made another Italian revolutionary leader, named Adriano Lemai, his successor. Lemai was later succeeded by Lenin and Trotsky. The revolutionary activities of all these men were financed by British, French, German, and American international bankers. The reader must remember that the international bankers of today, like the money changers of Christ's day, are only tools or agents of the Illuminati. While the general public has been led to believe that communism is a movement of the workers, Soviets, to destroy capitalism, pawns in the game and the red fog over America. Prove that both British and American intelligence officers obtained authentic documentary evidence which proved that internationalist capitalists operating through their international banking houses had financed both sides in every war and revolution fought since 1776. Those who today comprise the synagogue of Satan direct our governments, whom they hold in usury, to fight the wars and revolutions so they further Pike's plans to bring the world to that stage of the conspiracy when atheistic communism and the whole of Christendom can be forced into an all-out war within each remaining nation as well as on an international scale. There is plenty of documentary evidence to prove that Pike, like Weishaupt, was head of the Luciferian priesthood in his day. In addition to the letter he wrote Mazzini in 1871, another he wrote to the heads of his Palladian councils July 14, 1889 fell into hands other than intended. It was written to explain the Luciferian dogma, concerning worship of Satan and worship of Lucifer. In it, he said in part, that which we say to the crowd is we worship God. But it is the God that one worships without superstition. The religion should be by all us initiates of the high degrees, maintained in the purity of the Luciferian doctrine. Yes. Lucifer is God. And unfortunately Adonai, the name given by Luciferians to the God we worship, is God also, for the Absolute can only exist as two gods. Thus, the doctrine of Satanism is a heresy, and the true, and pure philosophical religion is the belief in Lucifer, the equal of Adonai, but Lucifer, God of Light, and God of good, is struggling for humanity against Adonai the God of darkness and evil. Propaganda put out by those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy has caused the general public to believe all who oppose Christianity are atheists. This is a deliberate lie circulated to hide the secret plans of the high priests of the Luciferian creed who direct the synagogue of Satan so that the human race still find it impossible to establish on this earth God's plan for the rule of the universe as he explained it to our first parents in the Garden of Eden, told in Genesis. The high priests of the Luciferian creed work from the darkness. They remain behind the scenes. They keep their identify and true purpose secret, even from the vast majority of those they deceive into doing their will and furthering their secret plans and ambitions. They know that the final success of their conspiracy to usurp the powers of world government depends upon their ability to keep their identity and true purpose secret until no cunning or power can prevent them crowning their leader king despot of the entire world. The Holy Scriptures predicted what Weishaupt and Pike planned would be put into effect until the spiritual forces of evil controlled this earth. Revelation 20 tells us how, after these things we relate have come to pass, Satan will be bound for a thousand years. What the term a thousand years means in measure of time as we know it I don't pretend to know. As far as I am concerned study of the Luciferian conspiracy, in the light of knowledge contained in the Holy Scriptures, has convinced me that the binding of Satan and the containment of satanic forces upon this earth can be brought about. More speedily if the whole truth concerning the existence of the continuing Luciferian conspiracy is made known as quickly as possible to all the people of all remaining nations. Research dug up letters from Mazzini which revealed how the high priests of the Luciferian creed keep their identity and true purpose secret. 
In a letter Mazzini wrote to his revolutionary associate, Dr. Briadenston, only a few years before he died he said we form an association of brothers in all points of the globe. We wish to break every yoke. Yet, there is one unseen that can be hardly felt, yet it weighs on us. Whence comes it? Where is it? No one knows. Or at least no one tells. This association is secret even to us the veterans of secret societies. In 1925 His Eminence Cardinal Caro Y. Rodriguez, Archbishop of Santiago, Chile, published a book The Mystery of Freemasonry Unveiled, to expose how the Illuminati, the Satanists, and the Luciferians had imposed a secret society upon a secret society. He produces a great deal of documentary evidence to prove that not even 32nd and 33rd degree Masons know what goes on in the lodges of the Grand Orient and Pike's new and reformed Palladian Rite and the affiliated lodges of adoption in which female members of the conspiracy are initiated. On page 108 he quotes the authority Marjata to prove that before Pike selected Lemai to succeed Mazzini as director of the World Revolutionary Movement Lemai was a rabid and confirmed Satanist. But after he had been selected he was initiated into the Luciferian ideology. The fact that the high priests of the Luciferian creed on this earth introduced the worship of Satan in the lower degrees of both Grand Orient Lodges and the councils of the Palladian Rite and then initiated selected individuals to the full secret that Lucifer is God the equal of Adonai, has puzzled many historians and research workers. The Holy Scriptures mention Lucifer only a few times Isa 14. Luke 10 18, Revelation 9 colon 1 11. The Luciferian doctrine however states definitely that Lucifer led the heavenly revolt, that Satan is the oldest son of God, Adonai, and the brother of St. Michael who defeated the Luciferian conspiracy in heaven. The Luciferian teachings also claim that St. Michael came on earth in the person of Jesus Christ to try to repeat what he had done in heaven. And failed. Because Lucifer, Satan, the devil call him what you may is the father of lies, it would appear that those spiritual forces of darkness deceive as many as possible so-called intellectuals into doing their will here as they did in heaven. Without getting into controversy it should be easy for the average Christian to realize that there are two supernatural powers. One we refer to as God to whom the scriptures give many names, and the other, the devil, who also seems to have many names. The important thing to remember is that according to Revelations there is to be a final judgment. Satan will break or be released from the bonds with which he is bound for a thousand years. He will again create chaos on this earth. Then Christ will intervene on behalf of the elect and God will divide the sheep from the goats. We are told that those who defect from God will be ruled in utter chaos and confusion by Lucifer, Satan, or the devil, for all eternity and will hate their ruler, themselves and each other because they will realize they were deceived into defecting from God and losing his love and friendship forever. Once a person reads Pawns in the Game and the Red Fog over America it will be easy to realize that the struggle going on is not of a worldly or temporal nature. It originated in that part of the universe we designate the celestial world, its purpose is to win the souls of men away from God Almighty. Learned theologians have stated that Lucifer, Satan, or call the head of the forces of evil simply the devil knows he did wrong and knows that he was wrong. He is a pure spirit and therefore indestructible. Knowing he is wrong he still is determined to drag as many souls as possible into hell with him to share his misery. This being a fact our duty is clear, we have to make known the truth in this regard to as many others as quickly as possible so they can avoid the snares and pitfalls set by those who serve the devil's purpose and penetrate the lies and deceits of those who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Wars and revolutions give the devil his greatest harvests of human souls, because so many are called and so few are chosen Matt 20, 16, 22, 14. We so often hear what is going on in the world today referred to as a war for the minds of men. That is only a half-truth and is worse than a whole lie. Weishaut's plot requires, 1. Abolition of all ordered national governments. 2. Abolition of inheritance. 3. Abolition of private property. 4. Abolition of patriotism. 5. Abolition of the individual home and family life as the cell from which all civilizations have stemmed.
6. Abolition of all religions established and existing so that the Luciferian ideology of totalitarianism may be imposed on mankind. Asterisk slash slash to which one of these points did Thomas Jefferson subscribe? The headquarters of the conspiracy in the late 1700s was in Frankfurt, Germany, where the House of Rothschild had been established and linked together other international financiers who had literally sold their souls to the devil. After the Bavarian government's exposure in 1786, the high priests of the Luciferian Creed established their headquarters in Switzerland, since World War II the headquarters have been in the Harold Pratt Building New York. The Rockefellers have replaced the Rothschilds as far as the manipulation of finances is concerned. In the final phase of the conspiracy the government will consist of the King Despot, the Synagogue of Satan, and a few millionaires, economists, and scientists who have proved their devotion to the Luciferian cause. All others are to be integrated into a vast conglomeration of mongrelized humanity, by artificial insemination practiced on an international scale. On pages 49 to 51 the impact of science on society Bertrand Russell says that ultimately less than 30% of the female population and 5% of the male population will be used for breeding. Purposes Reproduction will be strictly limited to the type and numbers required to fill the needs of the state. Because the rulings of the courts are so much in the public mind today, I will conclude my introduction by quoting from a lecture given to the members of the Grand Orient Lodge of Paris, France, by a top executive of Pike's Palladian Right, at the turn of the present century. He said, under our influence the execution of the laws of the Goyim has been reduced to a minimum. The prestige of the law has been exploded by the liberal interpretations introduced into this sphere. In the most important and fundamental affairs and questions judges decide as we dictate to them, see matters in the light wherewith we enfold them for the administration of the Goyim, of course. Through persons who are our tools though we do not appear to have anything in common with them. Even senators and the higher administration accept our counsel, this should explain the Little Rock incident, which took place a half century later. Can any thinking person deny that the conspiracy as revised by Weishaupt in the latter 1700s, and the plans drawn up by Pike in the latter 1800s, haven't matured exactly as intended? The empires of Russia and Germany have been destroyed. Those of Britain and France reduced to third-class powers. The crowned heads have fallen like overripe fruit. The world's population has twice been divided into opposing camps as the result of propaganda put out by the Illuminati. Two world wars have seen Christians kill each other off efficiently by the tens of millions without any person engaged having the slightest personal animosity towards the other. Two of the major revolutions, those of Russia and China, are accomplished facts. Communism has been built up until it is equal in strength to the whole of Christendom. Intrigue now going on in the East and Middle East is fomenting World War III. After that, unless stopped right now by sheer weight of informed public opinion, will come the final social cataclysm, then absolute physical, mental, and spiritual slavery will follow. Can any informed person deny that communism is being tolerated in the remaining so-called free countries? The British Special Branch of Intelligence, the Canadian RCMP, and the U.S. FBL could arrest every communist leaders within 24 hours of the order being given, but they are not allowed to act. Why? The answer is simple. Communism is being contained on the national and international levels of government on the advice of the Illuminati's agenter who give a great many utterly unconvincing excuses for the present policy of Britain, Canada, and the United States towards national and international communism. If the FBL or the RCMP act then the judges of the Supreme Courts of both countries find reason in law why those arrested should be set free. Such action would be utterly ridiculous if communism wasn't being contained for use in the final social cataclysm. Is it not time Christians woke up to the realization of their danger? Is it not time parents refused to allow their children to be used as cannon fodder to serve the Luciferian cause? Is it? Not time we became doers of the word of God instead of hearers only? The Federation of Christian Laymen, of which I have the honor to be president, has made available all the knowledge obtained to date dealing with the various aspects of the conspiracy. We have published Pawns in the Game and Red Fog over America in book form, and other pamphlets.
We keep those who have read our books up to date concerning the progress of the conspiracy by publishing a monthly newsletter, entitled News Behind the News. Our predictions of forthcoming events are based on our knowledge of the continuing conspiracy. They have come true to such an amazing extent that we have aroused the interest of thinking people throughout the world. We invite you to join us. Make yourselves fully acquainted with the various aspects of the conspiracy, then pass that knowledge on to others. Do this and the power of informed public opinion will become the greatest power on earth. I urge you to organize Christian civic leagues or similar groups. Use them as study groups. Use them to elect men who are loyal citizens. But before you select a candidate for public office make sure he is fully informed regarding all aspects of the international conspiracy on the municipal, state, and federal levels of government. All one-worlders won't serve the synagogue of Satan, knowingly. It is our duty to make them acquainted with the truth. Christian civic leagues should be non-partisan, and non-denominational. Their purpose should be to put God back into politics so we may establish government in accordance with his plan for the rule of the universe as explained to us in the scriptures and by God's only xxxxxxxxxx. Son Jesus Christ. Only then will his will be done here as it is in heaven. In my humble opinion, not until this is done will God intervene on our behalf and the words of the Lord's Prayer be accomplished. Signed, William Guy Carr Clearwater FLA October 13th. 1958. 1. It was printed in London for T. Madell Jr. and W. Davies, Strand, and W. Crick, Edinburgh. Copies are in museums and 2. Are privately owned by friends of the author in America. Guy Carpons in the game Chapter 1 The World Revolutionary Movement, 